there's a promise in God's Word that if we forget the vows we made to God, there is a remedy. Or if the nation forgets the vows and promises they made to God, and calamity and disasters begin to take place, there is a remedy because God has also made a vow to us. If my people, which were called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, I seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, I will heal their land. Second Chronicles 7, 14. I pray that this nation will remember their vows and restore our integrity in the sight of God. I'd like to close by saying this, that we are a people of destiny. We have been called for such a time as this. We are his spokesmen on this earth. We represent the Lord Jesus Christ. I always tell our people at school or at church, we have a dual citizenship. We that are Americans, we are proud to have the American citizenship. But we're also citizens of heaven. And we, are, we take our orders and directions from the Lord Jesus Christ as a born-again, spirit-filled believer. We, want to, we need to listen to the voice of God. Oh, how we need his wisdom as Solomon cried out to God for wisdom. How we as a nation, and we as Christian ministers within the nation, need to be that voice, need to rely upon the power and wisdom of God, and need to call upon God and as an oracle of the Lord. We are to be his spokesmen, his representatives, his ambassadors, if you will, to this world. As people from another world, we represent the Lord. But it says, when the Lord Jesus Christ spoke on those hillsides to those multitudes of people, he was like a person of another world. He was a person of another world. And they said of him, no man ever spoke like this man. This man speaks with authority. Today, we have been given that authority as men and women of God, as ministers in the gospel, as leaders in the body of Christ, and our generation. Call for this time. Let us stand strong. Let us be firm. Let us not compromise. Let us not be afraid. And let us always be yielded and directed by the Spirit of God. And we'll believe that God will turn the heart of our nation back to Him and will keep our hearts toward Him greater than ever. Thank you very much and God bless you real good. Hello, I'm Dr. Mike McKinney and I'm president of Promise Christian University and the Promise Governance Institute and the Promise Channel. It's my privilege to host one hour of the National Day of Repentance. I've asked leaders from Promise Christian Global Leaders Network, mainly in Asia, to uh, share their thoughts and prayers on behalf of our nation and their nations as well. Without a culture rooted in faith in God Almighty, uh, the government of the free people cannot be maintained. It's interesting that in the same year that the uh, Constitution was written and approved in Cry Congress, they also passed the famous Northwest Ordinance. Article 3 says religion, morality, and knowledge being necessary to good government and the happiness of mankind Schools and the means of education shall forever be encouraged. What a beautiful thought. As Christians in our nation, our responsibility is to remember the vows made by our founding fathers. In Numbers, after God had rescued his people over and over again, they began to forget their vows. In Numbers 21:14, it says the people grew impatient on the way and they spoke against God and against Moses. They forgot the deliverance from the Egyptians and the manna and the quail uh, and the wonderful uh, protection in the wilderness against pestilence and foes, water from a rock. Instead, they said, we, you brought us out of Egypt to die in the desert. There is no bread, no water, and we te detest this miserable food. God, so God lifted his hand and allowed the venomous snakes who were residents of the desert to come in their camp causing calamity, disaster, and pestilence, and death. Without God's divine protection, and the, pe the people began to panic, it was a pandemic. Then the people cried to Moses, and they said, We've sinned and spoken against God, our Lord, and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. As you know the story, when the people repented, God delivered them. 
In 2 Chronicles 7.22, it says, Because they have forsaken the Lord, the God of their fathers, who brought them out of Egypt, and have embraced other gods, worshiping and serving them, that is why he brought all this disaster on them. Today is our day to remember our promises to God. Repent for our sins as individuals and as a nation in the true humility and seek his forgiveness. God bless you. Good day, everyone, and the precious blessings of God be upon each one of you. I am Bishop Leo Alfonga, National President of the Philippines for Jesus Movement in the country of the Philippines. I thank God for this opportunity that we can gather together to celebrate the National Day of Repentance hosted by Dr. Mike McKinney, Dr. Adele McKinney of the Promise Christian University. Thank you for your efforts and aspirations. As we celebrate National Day of Repentance, what comes to our mind? To me, this gathering is a call from God for three purposes. One, so that the people and nation be restored to God. According to the book of Daniel in chapter 9 verse 5, I read it to you. O Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with all who love him and obey his commands. We have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled against you. We have turned away from your commands and laws. The description of the prophet Daniel is very, very relevant to our situation today. Very relevant to the condition of our nations and people, wherein our nations and people, even the people in the church, have forgotten the authority, the majesty, the love, and the holiness of God. We have forgotten to follow Him, to follow His commands. We have forgotten as a nation and as a people to recognize that God is our authority, final authority in faith and in our lives and in the ministry also of the church. Secondly, this gathering means for a revival for the people of God and also a revival for the nation to return to God. In Habakkuk 3.2, we read, and I read, it says, A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, Lord, I have heard of your name and of your fame. In other translation, it says, Lord, I have listened to your speech or message. I stand in awe of your deeds, O Lord. Renew them in our day, in our time. Make them known, and in wrath, remember mercy. The prophet Habakkuk recognized God. He recognized that God is still the one in control of what is happening around us and around the world. He said, I heard your message. I listened to it and I stand in awe of your deeds, O Lord. I remember what you have done. I remember your miracles of old. I remember, O God, your deliverance. I remember how you demonstrated your power and authority in the midst of the crisis of thy people, in the midst of the perilous times of the nations. Lord God, I remember, I remember what your deeds. And I said, Habakkuk, renew them in our day. Renew, O oh God. Make it happen again in our day of turmoil 
and perilous times and challenging times wherein people are in a spiritual crisis. The church has, uh, is in a uh, disturbance of what the challenges and crisis is all about and especially the world. Lord God, I have seen thy work. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Make it happen again. Number three, it is not only what we call a restoration of people and nation to God, a revival of the people, the church, and the nation to God, but it is also a recommitment. Today we celebrate our recommitment to God. One time ago, we have committed something to God. As individual, we have committed something to God as a church. And we have committed something to God for the nation. It is our prayer today in this day of national repentance. God, oh God, we plead that you do it again. We appeal to your love and mercy. Do it again. The, apostle, the, the prophet Habakkuk says, In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember thy mercy. Yes, it is our prayer. God, in wrath, in these times of confusion, in these times of having and facing the challenges without you, we will fail. And Lord God, we pray in wrath, remember thy mercy. It is our prayer, our, my prayer, that uh, as we celebrate the day of repentance, national repentance, we will be restored to God. We will be revived in our relationship with God and we will recommit anew what we have committed one time in our lives, in our ministry, and for the nation in general. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this celebration, the National Day of Repentance. We pray that you will instill in our hearts the mercy and praise, thy call for us to return to you and thy desire for us to be revived. I pray, we pray, Lord God, revive thy work, revive thy people, revive thy church, so that the people of the world will know that you are the only God of authority, majesty, holiness, and even, O oh God, that you require obedience, faith, and love for you. Lord God, thank you for Jesus Christ who died for us, saved us to his death and to the blood of Jesus all our sins will be cleansed. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, thank you. Give you honor and all praise for what you will do today for our people, for the church, and for the nation. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. God bless you all. When the Lord called me to do a business, I didn't understand why He put me in a place where they were doing abortion. I did not assist. I do not. I'm not there when they do abortion. But the Lord <clears throat> started this vision in my heart. And this morning, uh, the Lord just spoke to me <clears throat> that uh, this vision is still continuing. Because, uh, you know, America today is asking for a plan, asking for, for you know, um, a purpose. Yeah. But we have killed 60 million purposes in this country. And we still have the audacity to ask God to give us a plan. Mm -hmm. We have been killing every plan that the Lord birthed, mm -hmm. you know, in this country. And, and the Lord just spoke to me this morning, Pastor, mm -hmm. that, you know, I am not disappointed about my politicians, but I am hurting for the leaders of the church because they are not talking about this issue. Mm -hmm. 
you went to, today, you know, in Congress today, Pastor, we have we have the right to live for yes. for for babies to get out for coming out from the womb yeah. that if they're still alive they have the right to live and they want to bring it before congress and the congress 25 times 25 times rejected to even have a discussion about this issue mm -hmm. but you know what our churches are not talking about it either we're teaching them about worship, we're teaching, talking to them about prosperity, yeah. but we are not talking about the heart of the Father who is broken today. You know, these are the very source of our plan and our purposes, and we yeah. are silencing them before they can speak. Mm -hmm. And you know what the Lord reminded me in the book of Jeremiah, in chapter 1, He says, I have called you. That, was not, that calling was not limited to Jeremiah. That calling is, is a calling to the church. Right. I have called you to be a prophet. I have called you to be a spokesperson. That's I have called right. you to be a voice that you're going to speak, that yeah. you're going to, to, to pull down, that you're going to build and you're going to rebuild. And we as a church need to speak not only in our prayer life, but in our pulpits. And yeah. I really believe that I'm listening about this 25 times they, they, they denied you know, this to be discussed. And yeah. I believe this in my heart. I said, Lord, you have called me to, to prophesy and to in my prayer life. And I declare that there's going to be 25 times, 25 years, that every man and every woman in Congress who does not allow for this topic to be to be discussed, that they will be silenced in their political career for 25 years. I'm telling you that I believe that in my heart. We have that, we have that anointing to declare. And that those 60 million, more than 60 million children, that Father God, in the name of Jesus, that Lord, Lord, that there is going to be a release from our mouth, from our pulpit, that we are going to ask, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that there's going to be a payment of what we have done. You know, it's so important, Pastor, and, I, and the Lord just said that to me. I called you, you know, uh, to be a right. spokesperson. And you know what? People will not hear me, but I speak in the dawn, and I landscape in the morning. That we are awakened in mourning. Yes. That we are tongue <clears throat> is a pen of a skillful writer. Amen. That we can landscape the truth of the living God in the atmosphere. Because, you know, Pastor, the God who, who uh, uh, made this world by his power, formed this earth by, by his wisdom, and stretched the heavens by his understanding in the book of Jeremiah. Amen. I'm telling you, he is not asking us today that he is concerned how he created this earth because it's going into global warming. Really. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I have been confronted with this when I was a, a, a nurse in, in where they were doing abortion. The doctors were coming to me because they knew what, how I stand. Mm -hmm. And you know what, Pastor? One of the doctors, or many of them, asked me, Mila, we're going into population explosion, and we need to lessen the, the births, you know, and I was so upset about that. Mm -hmm. I said, why? Because the creator of the universe needs your wisdom today, that when he created this world, that there was going to be a problem with population explosion, so you do abortion? I mean, you know, so I'm asking today, our brothers and sisters in the churches, are we worried today about global warming? No matter what we do, we need to be a good, uh, you know, uh, wise people to take care of the earth. Oh, yes. But you know what? That's this true. earth is created by the creator. He knows exactly what he's doing, and I am telling you that we need to understand this because we are using it for a purpose yes. and anyway this morning I just really, yeah there was a, this is your vision yeah. we are going to talk to businessmen and women the Lord has prospered us we, if our if our leaders in our churches are not talking about it then we need to talk about it because God has put us in the marketplace we need to talk to our congressman we need to we need to speak to our staff and we need to to our offices you know what I mean we are being silenced and we need to speak while we can still speak amen and there's one thing, you know, that the Lord showed me this morning, too, very vivid. And that is something that I kept in my heart, and I shared it with very few people. And, you know, because the right to live for these children, Pastor. Oh, yes. You know, I, I remember this, that although I don't attend in that abortion in that room, because we have other major surgeries, mm -hmm. and it's a huge surgical suite. But, you know, at this time, I asked them, because I knew, I knew that there was a mistake that the doctor did, that doing an abortion to this young lady, and she came back in about uh, how many months. And I knew in my heart that that is the same pregnancy that they failed to take. And this, this, this pregnancy was already about seven and a half ma months. I knew that. And I told our supervisor, I said, as much as they have the right, I also have the right. If the child is going to come out and that's the same pregnancy, I want to be there. I want an incubator and I have to have the right. And I didn't even know this fight yeah. that was going to be here right now. Mm -hmm. I said, I want to have the right to, 
to, to, to resuscitate the child. And you know, I said, I, this is my right. I said, you have the doctors have a right and I have a right. So, yeah, so right. in a way, they, they yeah. bottled an incubator from another hospital yeah. and I was there in the corner. And, and they were doing their best to drown this child before they took him out from the womb. I see. This is the right to live. Mm -hmm. And I, when I took Andrew Philip, I baptized him, you know. When I took Andrew Philip and they put it in the table at the back door, mm -hmm. the doctor was screaming at me, what am I doing, what am I trying to prove? But, but this baby was already blue. They drowned him, you know. Mm -hmm. I was suctioning him, but he never made it. I see. And um, just like any of the abortion, they throw them in the trash. I want everybody to listen here. They throw them in the trash, but this boy was so big that they cannot put him in the trash. And I asked the administrator at the time, I want you to give him a funeral. I want you to pay the funeral for this child. Hmm. Why am I? And today, this is happening in America today. Oh, yes. yes. And I believe this in my heart. Yes. That the reason why they want these children to live because these are there there's a plan pastor they mm -hmm. they are selling these organs they're selling these children harvesting they're harvesting this mm -hmm. because you know as the days of noah you know what god is not going to send the flood anymore god is not going to send the flood god is not going to send anything because but the days of noah is they were living for 200 or 400 years That's right. yeah. i believe that they want to have these children live so they can harvest this so they can give it to the rich and to those who wants to live longer. But I am telling you, America, children of the, of the king, all of us in the churches that's being kept in the four corners of our church, we should not be satisfied that we're just singing and praising in churches. Yeah. And we do not have a voice. I mean, I, I believe this, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, you should not vote for anyone who will silence life. You should not vote for anyone who doesn't support Israel. You should not vote for anyone who is against the plan of the Lord. And I think that's what we should preach in our churches today. But I pray, I want to pray for, not only for, for you, but I want to pray for us as a church, as a country. Yes. That the Lord is going to steer our hearts. That the Lord is going to instruct us and direct us and to hear the sound of His voice that we are going to be aligned, that we are going to be synchronized with this vibration of the of for life. Not only, the, God says, not only for those who does that, but those that agrees with what they do. Mm -hmm. That you and I are not excused from what's happening in our country today, from the world today. Mm -hmm. You know what's happening in the world today, and I pray today that it's going to start in our churches, the leaders of our churches, that we are going to answer the call to be a prophet, to be yes. a voice, to be a sound, that Amen. we are going to speak to the atmosphere, that we're going to yes. pull down, that we are going to plant, that we're going to tear down, that we are going to bring healing, but at the same time bring destruction to evil. And I believe in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that, Father, we receive this anointing, Amen. we receive this calling, yes. that we are going to be a voice, Father Amen. God, that we are going to speak today, Father, yes. and we're going to set into motion your truth, mm -hmm. not only in this country, but all over the yes. world, in the name of Jesus. All of these missions will be possible from our perspective when the people of God are prospered, when this nation is prospered by the living God. And today, I want to discuss to you righteousness in government. When there is righteousness in government, the economy will tend to move up, the economy will expand, more people will have jobs, and the livelihood of people will be secured. And we will have the resources, the wherewithal, to send people to these places so that we can continue 
sending missionaries to these places where there's so much drought, so much emptiness, and so much dryness in their spiritual life. And this is something that I want to talk to you about this morning. In Proverbs chapter 29 verse 2, we know that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rules, the people groan. So it's clear that in government, righteousness is essential. Well, unless people are righteous in government, God will not bless this particular government, the nation. God resides in the Philippines. Okay. Earlier in our laws, also in our economy, we decided to put up Psalm 3312 on our currency. Maybe you have not noticed it from 20 pesos, 50, 100, 200, 500 to 1,000. Pinagpala ang bayan ng Diyos ay ang Panginoon. Hallelujah. What is the significance of having your currency emblazoned with the Word of God? It means that we are submitting the economy to the sovereignty and power and favor of God. Hallelujah! What is then the challenge to the church? God is challenging the church at this time and season by lifting the weights of differences among us could be doctrinal could be form of worship it could be personal maraming dahilan kung bakit nakakahiwahiwalay ang mga leaders ng simbahan but this is the time that God is telling us to be one we have a plan of action not those general things that, it's easy, that are easy to recite like you're a high school graduate. But it's a roadmap for the future. It's not a 10-year plan, it's not a 20-year plan, but a 50 to 100-year plan. We must provide thought leadership to the government. Amen? Secondly, we must fight for righteousness. We must fight for righteousness. Thirdly, we must transcend time. And space in immersing ourselves in the Word of God in praying and interceding for this nation and then we take dominion brothers and sisters it's okay to pray for those in authority for those in government so that the governor or the senator or the congressman will be born again but is there a better option than that yes there is let us train our young men and women, let us train our children to get the best education. Get them to the banks, get them after the university, get them to private offices. And when they become mature, let them run for public office. Instead of praying for a politician, that the politician may be born again. Why don't we train our children, our sons and daughters, to be presidents and vice presidents of this land, to be senators and congressmen, instead of praying for those in authority? Why don't we be in the authority? Why don't we be in the positions of leadership of this nation? So that you don't have to tell those in government how to be righteous, how to avoid temptation. Because our children, our young men and women will know how to conduct themselves according to plans, to the, to the plan of God for them and the purpose of God for them. Amen? That is how to take dominion. Because you will be spending 
resources, and time, precious time, going to the office of the governor of a province or to the senator of the land, waiting for your appointed time, only to be given 15 minutes or 30 minutes of his time so that you can pray for them. Why don't we just train our young men and women so that they can take the reins of government several years from now? Amen? Hi, family. My name is Dexter Law from Malaysia, representing Malaysia as a father of the nation and representing Southeast Asia. I was past coordinator and founding member of Spiritual Warfare Network under AD 2000 with Dr. C. Peter Wagner as international director many years ago. A spiritual father of Southeast Asia family journey, a father representing Greater China Homecoming, and as a global father of global gatekeepers, presently operating from Australia. I represent as a father even to global family to Fiji, Philippines and Sri Lanka. I have a son and daughter-in-law in Dallas, Texas with two grandchildren. I have three daughters and sons-in-law and ten grandchildren in Australia and another son and daughter-in-law in Malaysia. Together with my wife, we founded a network of churches in Malaysia and have spiritual sons and daughters in numerous nations of the world. My heart is one with the National Day of Repentance and Solemn Assemblies, shedding innocent blood, by way of legalized abortion is against God's word. And this will bring judgment to the nations. The cries of innocent unborn babies before God have reached the saturation point The either we as God's people humble ourselves and repent before God on behalf of our nations, for him to forgive, to forgive our national sin in identification repentance, or witness the unleashing of his judgment upon our beloved nations who legalize abortion. As we are living in the global village today, what happened? in the United States will affect the whole world. Therefore, I stand with my global family to repent before God and ask for His forgiveness and mercy to heal the United States of America and all other nations that have legalized abortion. Father, I come before you as a member of the global family and representing my country, Malaysia, my region, Southeast Asia, and the Chinese diaspora that have legalized abortion in the nations. Forgive our sins both for legalized and unlegalized abortion practices in the Southeast Asian nations, including Singapore and China, with legalized abortion law and other nations. Even though without legalized 
abortion law, nevertheless practices abortion, including Malaysia. I confess the shedding of innocent blood by way of legalized abortion incur your wrath and judgment upon our nations. Forgive our leaders for going against your word and command. As the cries of the blood of the unborn babies have reached a saturation point to trigger the judgment upon the United States of America, Australia and Europe, in other kingdom and other nations, I ask for your forgiveness and mercy for these nations. I pray especially for the order of judgment to be held in the Supreme Court of the United States of America, that it will uphold Mississippi law to ban late-term abortion of 15 weeks pregnancy. I pray that this significant ruling will enable the overturning of the past evil law, Roe v. Wade case, that legalized abortion and have unleashed millions of aborted babies globally in many nations, including Australia, United Kingdom, Europe, and Singapore. I pray by June 2020 that the Supreme Court of the United States of America will overturn the Roe and Wade abortion law. I pray, Father, that you bless the Supreme Court of the United States of America and all the nine judges that represent. And I pray they will stand for justice, for righteousness, in Jesus' name. I declare that the Supreme Court justices will fear you and will give heed to your word that you hate the shedding of innocent blood, including abortion. I declare that conservative justices of the Supreme Court will stand for justice and righteousness as laid down in your word. I cover these justices and their families with the blood of the Lamb against satanic attack and all men of afflictions and accusations thrown at them. I declare that every satanic scheme and strategy be broken and stop against the order of judgment in the United States of America Supreme Court on the 1st of December 2021. When the conservative judges stand and defend the Mississippi law betting late term abortion. I join millions globally and in the United States of America to declare that the foundation of the United States of America be restored with godly values based upon the Word of God, including preservation of life and against abortion. I declare that the Roe v. Wade abortion law be overturned by June 2020 and that the rippling effect will affect and change the trajectory of many nations, especially in the United States of America, United Kingdom, Australia, Europe, and Singapore. That this nation will be blessed by you instead of judgment. I declare that your global family 
in undergirding the United States of America were unleashed an exponential level of spiritual authority never seen before. Such authority then will cause demonic principalities and powers in the unseen spiritual realm to be defeated and be cast down. I declare that through this victory on the 1st of December 2021, your glory will begin to fill the United States of America and the nations of the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. As we join our voices in one accord to create a symphony to our God, a familiar verse that we pray and we use all the time, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. So today, may we come together again to seek his face. Yes, we have prayed with, yes, we have humbled ourselves, but God is asking us to seek his face, that we are going to seek his face, that we are going to come to repent before him. And Father, you are not asking, Lord, Father God, the world to repent. You are not asking, Lord, you know, the entertainment, the media, the politicians to repent. You're asking your people called by your name. And so we pray, Father God, as your people today, we repent from our wicked ways. And Lord, you're asking us to seek you face to face. We ask you to forgive us that we, O oh Father God, seek, O oh Father God, Facebook more than we seek your face. O oh Lord, you have been asking us to have a divine romance with the King in the secret place. We ask you, Father God, forgive us that we have not been showing up to a closed door, secret place encountered with you. That we will have, oh Father God, a divine romance with a lover of our soul. We love, oh Father God, the applause of men and enjoy the att attention of the multitude. But Lord, you have created us for your pleasure. You have asked us, Lord, to come to an audience of one, to an audience to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 26, verse 20, you said, Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut the door behind you and hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until this indignation is past. The COVID-19, the Lord is allowing us again to have an encounter with him, to close the door in the secret place, in the Holy of Holies, a 20 by 20 cubits, only a place for you and him, a place where God is going to come and seek us and see us face to face. When you pray, close the door in the secret place. Because the Lord wants us to have that encounter when he created us breath to breath, face to face. And so, Father, we ask you that you steer our hearts, oh, Father God, to fall in love with you over and over again. That we're not only going to know you, to love you and serve you, but we will enjoy you forever. We ask you, Father, today that as we have been called to be a witness Jesus asked us to be a witness unto him, that we are going to show up in court more than, oh, Father God, as a witness into evangelistic meetings. You have asked us to be a witness unto you, that we are going to come before the courts, Father God, that we are going to show up in our trial dates, that we are not going to lose our cases by default because we are not showing up. May we come to the courts of heaven, the, the epicenter of the universe, the Holy of Holies. May we, O oh Father God, come 
and we are going to override and overrule the accusation of the accuser. May we come before the courts, Father God, and may we allow the blood to speak on our behalf. Our mediator, Jesus Christ, our high priest. And may the Holy Spirit remind us of the word of promise in your word that it will not return to your void. May we, O oh Lord, see the picture in the book of Daniel, O oh Lord, that the courts were seated and the books were open. And may we see, O oh Lord, Father, you promise that the verdict is given to the saints. For we ask you, Father God, that we are going to be bold, Father God, and show up in our daily briefing, Father God, to hear the instruction from the ruling monarch of the universe. May we, O oh Father God, come, O Lord, in attention and in reverence, Father God, to hear your voice and take instructions from the King. May we, O oh Father God, Lord, change our ways, O oh Lord, to show up in daily briefing and we do all the talking. We want to hear your voice. We want to hear your instruction for a time such as this, Father, that we are a witness of Father God before the courts and we are going to speak the truth, nothing but the truth. That we are going to be a witness of Father God to the court to say that we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and we are your church and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of the living God. May we enter, O Lord, as the book of Hebrews says, in confidence, Father God, and in boldness, by the blood of the Lamb. Father God, and may we find ourselves, oh Father God, in front of the throne and asking the King if we may touch the scepter. Where may we can hear you say to us, ask me anything. Lord, your church has been busy using the sword of the Spirit. And we have, that we may see, Lord, that we are ruling and reigning with you. We are the delegated authority that you have given, oh Lord, to, to oppose the enemy here on earth. We ask you, Father God, today, that as we touch the scepter of the King, may we use our tongue, Father God, to be a pen, as a skillful writer when we declare and we decree the future of our country, the future of our world, the future of our children, Father God as we return the verses to the King, and as you promise, Father, that your word will not return to your void. May we, Father God, come before the throne, and Lord, may we bring our prayers, the prayers of the saints, the Lord, to fill the bowls, to tilt over the bowls that the, the elders are collecting, the Lord, in the book of Revelation, the prayers of the saints. May we see this bold tilt, Father God, and may we hear thundering and lightning, Father God, and may we hear the voice of the Lord say, as in the book of Isaiah, that the day of vengeance has come and the year of retribution has come. And so we ask you, Father, today, for we ask you to forgive us that we have missed the access, O oh Lord, into your holy mountain, because you said, only those who have clean hands. And we have, O oh Father God, soiled our hands with the blood of the innocent children, millions and millions of them who have not been given the right to cry in their mother's womb. Lord, we ask you to forgive us, Father, that our children are being trafficked four million a year, Father God, to be enslaved by evil masters and violated them and sacrificed them to their evil God. So we ask you, Father, today, we repent, Father, as your church. We ask you to give us access to your holy mountain where we are going to petition the king to hear our case and silence the accuser of the brethren. May we, Father God, come before the courts and see the blood of Jesus speak as a witness on our behalf. May we, Father God, see, and the book of Daniel say that there is a verdict that is given in favor of the saints. So we ask you that today, we forgive us 
For we have, O oh, Father God, approved. We have fellowship and we have voted for evil leaders, O oh, Father God, who has violated blatantly the commandments of the Lord. We ask you to give us clean hands so we may be able to see you face to face and seek your face that you may forgive us. You may heal our land. We repent in Jesus' name. Good morning, PCU and PGI family. This is uh, Dr. Joseph Chung, sending my warmest uh, greeting from Singapore um, to just uh, give a very short um, thoughts on this subject. So why integrity is essential in leadership? Uh, yes, it seems like basic team, but how uh, many cultures have slowly forgotten uh, this principle from the top down. Uh, today, I'll be approaching from a um, uh, different angle, uh, basically drawing uh, from the uh, Chinese context of what the uh, yeah, integrity means. So here you are, we have uh, the uh, definition uh, by the Chinese uh, definition on uh, integrity. And that is to focus, to enter into the rightful place. This definition is uh, taken uh, from the uh, Chinese uh, etymology. And that is to focus, to enter into the intended space or the rightful space. First, we look at the two words that actually form the word integrity. It is made up of the word zhen. Zhen means just. And zi, zi is called upright. Zhen zi. So it's basically talking about just right in a sense or just upright. Okay, so this is the Chinese um, um, meaning of integrity, and that is just upright. <laughs> However, we just uh, concentrate first on the word zhen, and that is um, uh, to be just and righteous. It, it is actually a combination of the two words on the above and below, right? And you have the above and below to form the word just and righteous. However, if you have the word no or not and the word just, and therefore you have the word called not just, and not just is for the word called why, why is not why just happened that um, to pronounce as uh, uh, why why is crooked and devious right however as you look into the uh, uh, etymology of zhen is uh, basically uh, very pictorial talking about a feet actually heading towards a city right so you have the feet below and a city above and therefore, the word just is talking about depicting a feed towards the city. And what is this feed is all about? It's uh, basically have two uh, meaning to that. One is that a troop is conquering a city or a righteous governor is entering a city to make things right. And that's the word for turn. Uh, however, it's not the whole part of integrity yet because it's just the first part of uh, integrity. And that's to make things right uh, in terms of entering the city and even to conquer it. So now we have the word zi. Uh, it's very direct. It is basically what you see on your uh, screen is uh, an eye and having a straight line and actually pointing not only forward but upward, right? So therefore, the word for zi uh, relates to upright, straight and direct. Basically, I think you are um, catching the meaning here now. <laughs> you are talking about zhen, that is actually to enter into a city uh, or for conquest or to make things right. 
at the same time you are we are to focus to focus right on that um direction i'd like to draw from a young person uh, asking a very uh, profound question in a time and age as such and we are talking and the person asks uh, basically everyone knows what is right and wrong yet we do the wrong thing and i want to know why uh, again it's a very basic question but this is why why we are talking about in integrity today right so you and i know that uh, AD, integrity was lost on the very first day when human chose to decide what is good and evil for and by ourselves and that is the story of adam and, uh, and eve uh, representing us all and so uh, because we have um Compromise our integrity from day one, we decided to have uh, law and order in order to make the world um, right, in a sense. Uh, but since we have compromised our integrity, you find that it is a review in this word called law and order. In Chinese, it's called fa lu. Fa lu is called law and order, right? Now, there is a difference uh, between this law and order, okay, and the law. In the Bible, okay, to main is called Fa Lu, but you will never find this Fa Lu in the Bible in the Chinese context. All right, I'll tell you shortly what it means. Um, here we are talking about the lawmakers may not able to maintain orders all the time or always, right? So we have first the law and then come the order. But I have just mentioned earlier that the Bible in the Chinese context did not speak about law and order. It was a flip of the two words called Lu Fa. Right? So Lu Fa first come the order and followed by the law. And so on the uh, former, we talk about um, the lawmakers uh, may not be able to use law to maintain orders. But if we were to understand what the Bible taught about is not law and order, but the sequence of order and law, a top-down thing, <laughs> one who honor God's order must also observe the law. Of course, not including uh, you know, laws as uh, against the, uh, uh, the principle of the Bible and Christ. So, um, because of the time factor, I'm just uh, basically uh, sharing uh, clips of some uh, thoughts as how we address this uh, word called integrity, right? So, the world is looking to the government what the church must do. And here we are. Well, to the government is law first and then come the order. And this is what the church must do. And that's to perhaps once and again put it right. Remember the word integrity, zhengzi, all right, that's to enter into the rightful place. And that rightful place is basically to put the order right of first having the order of God. And therefore, it will help people to abide to law that will bring peace, that will bring justice, that will bring true order. And this is what the church must do. And yet we see the uh, turmoils and the um, many uncertain things that's happening in our world today. And uh, we can't help to, but to think about what Edmund Burke uh, once said that all that is necessary for life triumph of evil, all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. And this by Edmund Burke. So we need the good people. We need the good men and women to do something. So as I conclude, I'd like to draw attention to uh, the model of Jesus, the life of Jesus, his example. He said he came to the world and became the flesh and make his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Not just grace, not just truth, but grace and truth. And therefore we see the sinner was forgiven, and so are the people who seek to cast the stone. 
However, Jesus came and we're reminded that He has not come to judge the world, but He has come to save us. And this is the mandate um, for all who are leaders in the different mountains, in the different sphere of uh, influence. And Nelson Mandela once said that uh, education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. But if education is the answer to change the world, we wouldn't see much of it. And perhaps uh, allow me to just add the word biblical education as what we have uh, uh, shared in the uh, earlier. Uh, and since my graduation um, in the year 2014, and only came 2020, my little booklet finally published. And it is in this time of pandemic, during the um, just more than a year, more than 5,000 have participated the biblical Chinese alphabet online and live seminars and coming from about seven countries and more than uh, 2,000 books uh, have been distributed. And currently, BC8 trial materials are being taught in kinder and junior classes and are receiving positive uh, feedback uh, from even um, the pre-believers. There is a hope that God has given us. He's given us a wonderful promise in John 3, 14 through 16, just as Moses lifted up the bronze snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Praise the Lord for that today. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds may be exposed, but whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. God has promised no matter what happens, there is a remedy. When his people cry out, the Lord will hear and answer their prayer. According to 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, one of our favorite scriptures, when I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land or send plague among the people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Wonderful. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this National Day of Repentance. We ask that you bless the United States of America and all the nations around the world, for you are the creator of the heavens and of this earth. We pray today, Lord, for that our nation will repent and call upon you once again as our founding fathers who, who began this nation through prayer and through the reading of the word of God. We pray that we will return to these marvelous principles of faith that are, we were founded upon in the first place. And bless the other nations as well. We have so many watching here today by way of television. We pray, Lord, that we do repent in our hearts before you today that you will forgive our, us and heal our, our land and the lands of the world. This we pray and this we believe in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen.